welcome to my channel learn and earn to live your life on your own terms hello everyone you're welcome to my channel learn and earn academy and today in this video we are going to talk about monetary policy of rbi what exactly is monetary policy what is the objective of monetary policy and how rbi uses monetary policy to control the economic activity in our country in this video we are going to learn all about monetary policy and how it determines the economy of our great nation so if you like this video you can press the like button you can subscribe to my channel and you can also share this video on social media now monetary policy is a part of economic policy which regulates the level of money in the economy to achieve certain objectives now rbi has certain objectives now in order to achieve those objectives in the benefit of the economy of the nation rbi uses monetary policy as a tool to achieve those objectives so we are going to talk about those objectives and how rbi uses monetary policy to achieve those objectives those goals the way we have goals in our lives similarly rbi also has goals for the country and in order to achieve our goals we need resources similarly in order to achieve rbi goals rbi also needs resources and monetary policy is one of those resources so in india the rbi controls the monetary policy it is announced twice a year through which rbi regulates the price stability of the economy now what are the goals of monetary policy as i said we all have goals in our life it could be a big home a good salary a promotion similarly rbi also has goals through its monetary policy what are the goals of rbi the biggest and the most important goal of rbi is to maintain price stability this means inflation control inflation the prices of the goods and commodities should not go up because if they go up poor people will not be able to afford food and which will be a terrible situation for a nation like india high unemployment if more people are unemployed there will be less demand in the economy which is bad for the country economic growth high economic growth means high prosperity people will be happy people will have jobs people will have good income but if there is low economic growth it will be a disaster for the country so to maintain economic growth is also a goal of RBI's monetary policy interest rate stability the rate at which a common man or an industrialist gets a loan is very important for the economy so in order to maintain stability in the interest rate without interest rate going too high or too low is also the goal of RBI monetary policy stability in the foreign exchange market now this is very important in order to make india a strong economy there has to be a strong foreign exchange reserve which can only happen when india exports more and imports less or the balance is maintained financial market stability now financial market is the market in which people companies go and borrow money to raise resources to establish businesses to set up industries now financial market stability is also a goal of rbi so i'm sure these goals which you can relate it to your own personal goals similarly rbi also has these goals in its mandate now how does rbi control these goals 
through the monetary policy there are two measures one is called qualitative and the other is called quantitative now quality means doing something which cannot be counted in numbers doing something which is not numerical for example if you go and build good relationship it is a qualitative aspect of your personality but if you go and make sales to 10 people this is quantitative aspect of your personality similarly RBI has two types of control one is qualitative control and the other is quantitative control now we are going to learn about both these types of control which RBI uses to control the economy of the nation let us first talk about quantitative aspect all the aspects the tools which RBI uses to control numbers which can be counted which can be factually seen on paper the first is bank rate now bank rate is the minimum rate at which the RBI provides loan to the commercial banks of the country so if a commercial bank for example SBI Bank of Baroda Union Bank wants to borrow money RBI will give them loan money on bank rate now bank rate is also called discount rate because the central bank provides finance to commercial banks by rediscounting bills RBI uses bank rate to control credit in the economy so if RBI wants to take money out of the economy there is a lot of money in the market now RBI sees that this is not good for the economy so what does RBI do RBI will decrease its bank rate so what will happen these banks commercial banks will borrow more money from RBI so all the money which the commercial banks have will go to RBI so the market will have less money this is how RBI uses these tools to control credit in the market for instance if RBI increases the bank rate which is increasing the cost of borrowing of the commercial banks why will commercial banks borrow from RBI therefore the lending in the economy will fall increasing the lending rates by commercial banks so if the bank increases their rate of interest obviously people will not come to take loan so this will discourage investment hence the demand will fall eventually the economy will not grow and the inflation will be con in control now the other quantitative aspect or tool used by RBI to control monetary policy is open market operation now it is purchase and sale of securities by RBI now RBI goes in the market purchases government securities or sells government securities for example if there is huge inflation if the prices of goods and commodities are increasing if there is a lot of money in the market obviously RBI will want to take some money off the market so what will it do it will sell government securities so what will happen people will buy these government securities from RBI hence the money supply in the market will decrease it will come in the hands of RBI hence inflation will be controlled the third aspect of quantitative tools is cash reserve ratio now every bank is required to keep a certain proportion of deposit in form of cash with themselves as reserves they cannot use this amount of money they have to keep it as security as reserves RBI monitors it for example today the cash reserve ratio is 4% so out of every 100 rupees RBI has to keep 4 rupees 
as cash reserve ratio. Now the fourth and the important quantitative tool which RBI uses is liquidity ratio. Now liquidity adjustment facility is a monetary policy instrument which allows commercial bank and primary dealers to borrow money through repurchasing agreement. Now liquid adjustment facility is used by banks to adjust their day-to-day -day fluctuation in liquidity. For example, if a bank falls short for some money for one particular day, they can borrow it from RBI through LAF. There are different mechanisms to ensure that banks have funds on daily basis as required so they can use liquidity ratios these liquidity borrowings marginal standing facility liquid adjustment facility statutory liquidity ratio these are the instruments these are the tools which rbi can use to control the money now what are the qualitative tools now i have already told you the difference between quantitative and qualitative Qualitative means something which cannot be counted in numbers, which cannot be uh, shown in facts and figures. But these are very important measures which RBI takes to control the monetary policy. The first is fixing margin requirement. Now, margin refers to the proportion of loan amount which is not financed by the banks. In other words, I am an industrialist. I want 100 crores of loan from a bank. Now bank will say, you go and bring 25 lakhs, I will give you 75 lakh loan. So margin is the amount of money which I need to bring from my own pocket. Only then I will get a loan of 75 lakh. So even though I have a requirement of 1 crore rupees, I have to give a margin of 25% to the bank only then bank will give me 75 lakh as loan this is called margin the second aspect is publicity now what do you mean by publicity rbi publishes various reports stating what is good and bad in the system this published information can help banks to take proactive measures to control any abnormality to contain and stop any disruption so it is in a form of a guideline which rbi issues through its bulletins weekly monthly quarterly now all the banks very proactively study these reports because these reports are very important to determine the future of banks in our country credit rationing now, what is credit rationing? Now, RBI fixes certain amount of money to be granted. Credit is rationed by limiting the amount available for each commercial banks. This method controls even bill rediscounting. For certain purposes, upper limit of credit can be fixed and banks are told to stick to this limit. This can help lowering bank credit exposure to unwanted sector. Now, in other words, credit rationing means credit exposure. For example, every bank has a mandate. They need to provide loans to different sectors of the society. For example, agriculture, industry, education loan, housing loan. Now, every sector of the economy has certain limitations. For example, in agriculture, out of 100 rupees, only 40 rupees you can give. Industry, only 20 rupees you can give out of 100 rupees. Loan to education to children, only 10 rupees. So out of 100 rupees, for example, if a bank has, how much percentage of credit the bank can give to different sections of the society, depending upon their requirement, is called credit rationing or credit exposure the fourth and a very important part of rbi to control uh, 
the monetary policy or to control the economy of the country is called moral suasion. Now, what do you mean by moral suasion? Now, it is the pressure of RBI which is put on the banks. Now, RBI is the regulator. If a bank does something wrong, RBI can close the bank. So, all the banks have this threat. All these banks fear RBI that if they do anything wrong, they will be punished. Even their license can be cancelled. This is called moral suasion. So, it implies to the pressure exerted by RBI on Indian banking system without any strict action for compliance with the rules. It is suggestions to banks. Most of the times, if banks do any mistake, if they do not follow the rules and the regulations, RBI imposes heavy penalty, heavy fine. So, it is a threat. It is a check and balance on all these banks. Control through directives, through different instruction, direct action. RBI does take direct action if there is anything wrong in the economy. Now, these are some of the measures through which RBI controls the economy of a nation, which is called monetary policy. So, I'm sure this video would have given you a great insight on what exactly is monetary policy and how it controls the economy of a nation. So, if you like this video, you can press the like button, you can subscribe to my channel and you can also share this video on social media. Please help us to spread education in this beautiful world. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video on social media. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.